the crew embarks on a mission to find an alien planet suitable for colonization, unaware that they have actually arrived on Earth four billion years in the past. A lethal virus has ravaged all plant life on Earth, decimating forests and vegetation worldwide. This catastrophe has drastically reduced oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Moreover, food derived from the virus-infected plants is causing autoimmune diseases in humans. Humanity's best chance of survival in this apocalyptic scenario lies in a project called Project Gemini, developed by Dr. Stephen Ross. Project Gemini revolves around two unique extraterrestrial artifacts unearthed by archaeologists. One artifact is an unusual sphere, while the other is a warp engine. Archaeologists determined that both artifacts are 4 billion years old, predating life on Earth. In a presentation, Stephen explains that the warp engine can warp space, enabling travel to distant solar systems with ease. The sphere, on the other hand, is a terraforming device that creates life and suitable environments on planets. Stephen reveals that this sphere was responsible for creating life on Earth 4 billion years ago. While the origin of the extraterrestrial intelligence that left the sphere remains unknown, humanity can now replicate this process on another planet. Stephen further explains that humans have successfully recreated and used both devices. Probes sent with the warp engine have discovered a planet ideal for terraforming and colonization. Stephen introduces the scientific team for the mission, comprising Peter Lehman, Leona Redwood, and David Kurtz. They will be accompanied by a military unit led by Major Ryan Kyle. As Stephen and his crew prepare to board the rocket, his girlfriend Amy rushes to stop him but she arrives too late. The rocket is already launched. As they prepare to warp space, Peter and David conduct a final check on the engine and the sphere. They speculate about the origins of these artifacts, noticing strange patterns and cracks forming on the sphere's surface. The crew straps in and prepares to enter the wormhole created by the engine. Each member holds a personal object, such as a teddy bear or a Bible. The warp drive is initiated, and the ship enters the wormhole. However, a critical error is reported by the onboard computer, causing all crew members to lose consciousness as the ship traverses the wormhole. After their journey, the crew wakes up to find themselves orbiting a blue planet. Upon checking their star maps, they realize they are not in their intended solar system and have no idea of their current location. Stephen angrily confronts Peter who is responsible for inputting the coordinates and checking the engine. Despite Peter's insistence that he performed the checks, Stephen is furious and relieves Peter of his duties, declaring that they have failed the mission and doomed everyone on Earth by traveling to the wrong location. In his quarters, Stephen reminisces about his girlfriend Amy in a sweet moment they shared, where he compared them to quantum entangled particles connected across space and time. He also recalls an encounter with an unexplainable being while working with the sphere. The military personnel explained to Stephen that during their passage through the wormhole, they entered an unknown fourth dimension before returning to their three-dimensional space in an unidentified part of the universe. Without knowing their location, they cannot return. We are, we can't get back. Suddenly, the ship alerts them to an approaching unidentified object, which turns out to be Peter's frozen body. Shit. Investigations reveal that Peter had gone to check the engine against Stephen's orders. The crew assumes Peter committed suicide out of guilt, but Liana argues that he wouldn't do such a thing. Stephen rebukes Liana for mourning Peter, whose mistake has potentially doomed millions back on Earth. Stephen and David discuss David's deceased daughter, Rita, who motivates his participation in the mission. Stephen then suggests that they consider the blue planet for terraforming. Initial data indicates the planet is fairly stable, and Stephen insists on carrying out the terraforming mission there. Despite objections from the others, particularly Ryan, Stephen uses his authority to enforce his decision. Except for Richard, one of the military personnel, the entire crew boards a lander to descend to the planet's surface. Their descent is interrupted by a sudden storm, forcing them to jettison their fuel tanks to survive. They crash land on the planet. Stephen recalls another memory with Amy, where he gave her a bracelet made from the sphere's material as an apology for his work-related absences. The crew assesses their situation and realizes they lack the fuel to return to the main ship in orbit. Stephen, undeterred, insists they focus on terraforming the planet to make it livable. The crew's enthusiasm is clearly lacking. They prepare to move the sphere into a well-protected cave in the mountains. As they move the sphere, they notice a strange sticky goo where it was kept. Back on the main ship, Richard discovers the same sticky goo on the engine airlock walls and finds a portable camera. Stephen launches the sphere in the mountain cave, and the crew returns to the lander. At the lander, Ryan arrives and declares martial law, 
When Stephen demands an explanation, Ryan mentions new information discovered by Richard. Richard shows the footage from the portable camera. In the recording, Peter is trying to prove he didn't make a mistake with the engine by documenting his inspection. As he enters the engine, a crawling creature attacks him. Richard explains that the creature first appeared inside the sphere when they left Earth. Security footage also shows the creature and the engine when they entered the wormhole, indicating it tampered with their coordinates. They dubbed the creature the Trojan as it infiltrated the sphere like soldiers inside the Trojan horse. Leona warns Richard to be cautious of the Trojan, but he reveals that it traveled to the planet with them by hiding in the sphere. David then points out that the sphere is terraforming the planet, but not according to their programming. Stephen insists they need to adjust the sphere's programming, but Ryan asserts that Stephen no longer has the authority to give orders. All the scientists support Stephen. Ryan asks Richard to display another security footage, which shows Stephen encountering an unexplainable being on Earth, an encounter he kept secret. Ryan accuses Stephen of withholding information about the sphere, which led to Peter's death, and revokes his decision-making privileges. Defying Ryan's orders, Stephen decides to adjust the sphere's settings and persuades David to join him by reminding him that the entire Earth will perish like his daughter Rita if they don't act. At the sphere, Stephen and Ryan discover it creating a green life form. As Stephen attempts to adjust the settings, David notices the Trojan approaching and warns that they need to leave. When Stephen refuses, David fires a warning shot, then shoots the sphere when Stephen doesn't relent. Stephen pulls a gun on David in response. The Trojan arrives, forcing them to flee back to the lander, barely escaping. Stephen warns David that any further threats to the mission will result in him being shot. Ryan arrives and punches Stephen for his disobedience. An alarm goes off in the ship, indicating a hull breach. Leona wakes up and finds the Trojan sticky goo everywhere. A military personnel sacrifices himself to give her a chance to escape. Leona reaches the central control room where they deduce that the Trojan entered through the thinnest part of the hull, indicating its intelligence. They devise a plan to use Steven as bait to lure the Trojan in front of the lander's boosters and incinerate it. Leona is tasked with opening the airlocks to lure the Trojan out and hiding at the last minute. However, the lander's engines fail to fire, forcing Leona to come out and distract the Trojan. When the engines finally ignite, Liana, positioned in front of the boosters, is fatally injured. The Trojan then chases Stephen and David, who manage to close a door just in time, severing a part of the creature. Stephen recalls a memory where Amy tried to convince him not to go on the mission because she was pregnant and close to developing a vaccine for the plant virus. Despite this, Stephen insisted he had to go to save the world. Stephen analyzes the severed part of the Trojan while David nurses an injury from the creature. He discovers that the Trojan is a bio-robot created by the sphere from the same material. Additionally, bacteria from David's wound hold the key to the vaccine for the plant virus. They must get this information back to Earth. When Stephen runs a test on the bio-robot, it causes electrical interference, revealing it is the same unexplainable being he encountered in the cave. Ryan arrives and places Stephen under arrest, accusing him of caring only about being the world's savior, regardless of the cost in lives. David agrees, and Stephen remembers Amy expressing similar concerns. Stephen instructs Richard to adjust the star maps based on their movement across 4 billion years, revealing their solar system. He realizes they travel through time, not space, and they are still on Earth 4 billion years in the past. This deduction comes from recognizing the piece of the sphere used to make Amy's bracelet. The spheres in the past and present are the same. Meanwhile, David's infection worsens. Stephen leaves a message for Amy on the bracelet that will be revealed when water touches it, containing the sphere's command to communicate across time. Ryan plans to set bombs in the cave to kill the Trojan, but Stephen persuades him to lure the creature into the lander instead. An infected David arrives and begins shooting, intent on killing them and destroying the sphere to prevent humanity's existence and spare his daughter Rita's suffering. Stephen shoots and injures David. He then lures the Trojan with a flare and a bomb timer, in a final struggle, the Trojan kills David, but Stephen escapes the lander before the bombs detonate and destroy the creature. With limited oxygen, Stephen heads to the cave, hoping Amy received his message and will contact him. Amy discovers the bracelet in the rain and receives Stephen's message. She rushes to the cave and executes the command, and they find themselves face to face across time. Stephen provides Amy with the details about the bacteria needed to create a vaccine to save Earth. He apologizes for not returning to her and expresses his deep love. They share a passionate kiss through time. In the present, David succumbs to his injuries. Amy's vaccine succeeds, restoring flowers and vegetation. Amy is seen pushing their baby in a stroller. 
who now has a chance at a full and healthy life. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Let us know what movie you'd love us to recap next.